everybody and welcome to my Anno 1800 preview. As you may know, in a few days there will be a closed beta and we are allowed to record finally stuff and that's what I'm gonna do. But first of all, a big thanks and shout out to Corrales and also Ubisoft for giving me some of the footage I can use in this video. Um, Corrales sent me over his uh, gameplay from his first look video without his voiceover so we can have a little glimpse on what he's done there and just explain a bit more what's going on in the game and also Ubisoft provided me with a little bit of um, cinematic shots and b-roll material from an event in Berlin a few months ago so that you can just enjoy a little bit the beauty of the game. But before we do so here's a little info. The game release has been postponed to the 16th of April unfortunately but this is only for the good because performance um, has to be still improved and that's what's gonna happen and I am very optimistic that we're gonna get a great game then. And yeah, I uh, just thought, okay, before we go a little bit into detail with the new game, uh, I will give you a little look into the past of the Anno series. And then from the 31st of January, we're gonna have a few days of a little bit of a let's play of the beta, and then we can enjoy the game in its full glory. But now let's look into the past of the series. It all started in 1998 with the first iteration of Anno, which was 1602, and it kind of created a new genre of a simulation city builder game that is basically using an, a big area of islands where you have to settle down and on one island first but then with uh, the time going on you're gonna settle more and more onto different islands and um, there is a very in-depth um, simulation of goods and stuff you need to carry to your main island to fulfill the needs of your inhabitants to make them more happy and grow so that was basically the main target of the game it, it kind of featured a very nice and lovely graphic um, which is a little bit isometric but it was awesome to play and was really a nice opener to a new genre. Anno 1503, which was released in 2003, um, made by Related Designs and also published uh, by Sunflowers, which was also the publisher of the first game, um, was basically just a refined version of Anno 1602 with a way better graphics, but also um, with a way more in-depth uh, value chain or just kind of chain of goods because it got more in-depth, um, all the different uh, chains you have to fulfill until you get the final goods were even more um, sophisticated and better uh, made and was way more important now to have a look onto every goods and stuff which is available on the islands um, but uh, that was basically all that has changed for the first game and so the game was a very good um, evolution of the first game but not really a revolution. Anno 1701, which was released in 2006, um, was a bit more of an evolution and revolution at the same time because it, um, well for the game me mechanics, it still built up on the very old mechanics of the first game, which was still on the big island, um, make sure that your people live to the best and get all the goods they need. But on the other hand, you had a very in the senate system where it was important that you are uh, good in your politician uh, relationships with all the other players in the world and that made sure that you had some advantages for example you could spy on other islands to know how many kind of different um, pioneers or aristocrats and stuff they had uh, but other than this this the the game was just very much like the old games with an improved graphics and basically the same mechanics as before Anno 1404 is potentially even until today, the be the most favorite Anno game of all time. I think um, if you look into the forums or with the fans, Anno 1404 uh, is simply the most loved game in the whole series and for several reasons I should say. Um, me personally I love the game as well, I have several thousands hours uh, in the game for sure. It was released in 2009 and it featured so many new things like monument builds, it um, improved the overall mechanics, the value chains got more in-depth yet they got better than it was in 1701 where they were kind of a mess because they were pretty long and pretty in-depth but sometimes it was really hard to uh, even get them together because it was a little bit too spread out and stuff but uh, 1404 improved the problems that the old game had and it, it just implemented so many new things including the Orient so that's the first Anno that featured not only one world but so to say two worlds in this whole big world so obviously the overall card was the biggest card available and uh, the islands got bigger and bigger but also more versatile it was a very new experience and also the politician system um, 
um, with all the standards and stuff have been improved hugely and so this game offered so many new ways in playing the game um, and I think with all the additions that came later until um, in the game for example Venice uh, it, it was just an overall amazing game and people just loved it for the new stuff that has been implemented yet keeping the old glory of the game. After the huge success of 1404, Anno and publisher Ubisoft, um, they just kind of thought they have to go into a new terrain and with Anno 2070 they implemented the first ever future located game of Anno. It uh, featured a completely different mechanics in kind of how you play the game since there were a few things scrapped away from the old titles. The game was a lot more simplified than the older titles, the value chains were, were a lot simpler and um, you had to to choose between two different um, groups, whether you've been uh, the economic or the kind of tycoon uh, gamer uh, who's going to pollute the environment or with the eco-friendly one you try to make the most of the environment but get less kind of energy and stuff. It, it was an interesting step into the future, even though the game wasn't um, that badly received, it kind of wasn't as much loved as it was um, with 1404 in the case. But um, Anno 7, uh, 2070 still had its glory um, with implementing a nice feature like a Deep Sea. The add-on Deep Sea um, allowed you to build below sea level, uh, which was very interesting, very new for Anno, but um, it kind of felt still like a little bit of a test. And you know, the game still has its place in the series, but it isn't the most favorite one of all time, yet it was, a, it was a great and interesting new step ahead into a new area of Anno games. Anno 2205 was potentially the most controversial Anno game. It was located way more further into the future than 2070 was and it completely changed the way Anno was played actually. Um, while Anno 2070 still tried to maintain um, the big world with the ver ver various islands that uh, feature still the same mechanics of building your city and maintaining it with different value chains, Anno 2205 implemented a world system that kind of had different planets um, that work together with bigger value chains that were somehow working more or less automatically without using ships. Obviously you were using spaceships that you couldn't really see because they were just assumed they were there. And then you also had not really islands. Um, you had a big continent where different parts of the continent were blocked at the beginning and you can unlock them once your city is growing. Also the little support system, um, the, carry people, the people that carry goods were scrubbed away from the game. Um, it was more or less like a, an energy system where the goods were automatically transported to your um, warehouse which many of the Anno players didn't really like. Also a lot of other things in the game were pretty much, you know, they didn't really um, work the way that I, I think the developer hoped it to be. Um, the game still had its strengths and had some interesting mechanics, for example all the stuff that was about um, making various quests and various um, kind of bigger builds, bigger monuments and also an interesting mining system, but all of a sudden this game really wasn't the success that Ubisoft or the Anno series needed to go on with the future kind of environment for the games and I think this game also pretty much um, was the main reason why we now have Anno 1800 which is a step back into the older time and into a hi more historical uh, environment rather than being further more into the future yet I feel like in the future I, I can still I think I can still imagine having a way better future Anno that has, has its strengths and uh, builds off the mistakes that definitely were available in Anno 2205, yet there were a lot of strengths and maybe in the future, in a few years, we can kind of see a way improved Anno 2205 version that then is called somewhat differently, but hopefully we're gonna see something interesting in the future. Alright, that was basically the uh, overall just look back into the history of Anno games. Uh, for me personally, as I said, Anno 1404 is by far my favorite game. So this is why I'm so super stoked to play Anno 1800 because I, I think it... I'm just a bigger fan of the historical environment and the historical location of the game. Uh, it's not that I found these future games of Anno too bad, I actually like them, I enjoyed playing them, but it was not the Anno feel I had with the older games, especially with 1404. So another one, um, another information 
I think most of you who know Anno will know it, but just a little bit of insider knowledge. The numbers that the Anno games carry with them, like 602, 1503 and so on, they always have to make the number 9 in combination. So if you add all the numbers together, uh, the sum of it will always be 9. This is also why the game is called 1800 and potentially it will be pretty hard to have a game that is located in the 20th century, since with 19 you already have 10 as a sum. So this is something interesting to keep in mind, but this is just a little bit of a, you know, knowledge that's nice to know, but not really does anything to the game. I just wanted to let you know. Um, but that's about it for the older game. Now let's go into, finally, Anno 1800 and into the footage that Kerala sent me and let's enjoy what's all new about the game and hopefully you guys are as excited afterwards as I am for the game. All right, let's start in the menu. We even have the music, which is awesome. I, I feel like the music uh, was always a Threads of Anno games and it, it still is. And as you can see, it's a beautiful looking menu, which features somewhat these, these kind of um, Anno graphics from 1404 converted into the environment of more steampunk-ish, more modern area. And I love them in Anno 1404 especially uh, because it is this little art style that really carries the the heart and the essence of Anno games. Um, it's a little bit postcard-ish, I would even say, and um, yeah, it's awesome. As always, you can see we have a sandbox and a campaign, a campaign mode, um, and I think, you know, in comparison to other games, um, the Anno series always was famous for its sandbox, and um, the campaign still is very nicely done, but it's not really that what you want to do as an Anno player. So for our little let's play on the 31st of January for the few days, we definitely go and do the sandbox mode. Um, as always, you can choose different characters, even though just mentioning, uh, Karelis is in the game as a character, which is awesome. Not the one to choose, but he's like a side character, which is awesome, and I'm so happy for him. Um, you can also choose the banner, as always, uh, with different colors and uh, a different marking. And I believe later on you will be able to mod this and put your own thing on, as always. And uh, I would love to put Rudy here, but obviously Karelis put Karelis in. So this is pretty normal. As always, you can choose the various modes um, if you want to play normal, advanced or expert. Um, I always try to start advanced, but um, I'm mostly failing. So this is why this is why I also like that Keralis takes the um, normal mode. But yeah, we are going into the mo uh, into the game, and as always, it's starting with a little bit of a cinematic view to the game. But I don't want him to pl talk now. I want to jump into the next interesting bit of the play. Uh, let's play which is this lovely thing over here, and this is the world mode. Um, let's see what's happening when Keralis is clicking onto the world map. As you can see right now, he is uh, checking out these little icons down there, but the world map is interesting because it combines the various areas of the game, because you don't only have the old world, you only have the Caribbean, you have the Arctis, and you have like a desert area. So this combines kind of the, the strengths that the uh, newer Anno games brought in, and yet gives you a very, you know, old and familiar feel with the old world map. Or like you always have like one map where you have various islands on and then you can switch between those worlds where you have different things. So it's like not really like in Anno 1404 where you had like the Orient as a part of the whole world. Um, now it is separated into different worlds and somewhat something like you know from Surviving Mars or um, I think also another game that features this is like SimCity which is maybe be a bad example but you can just kind of imagine it works like this. As also in the old games, uh, the new game also features monuments. As you can see in the middle of this area, as you might have just spotted quickly, there is a big, big building that still needs to be built. And um, yeah, it's amazing. It's just so cool that they finally feature monuments again. And I always loved this, even though they take up so freaking many resources, but hey. Um, yeah, now jumping into what is the most normal Anno play ever and I feel like this is I think the biggest compliment you can make. This game instantly feels like Anno 1404 again. Um, while the modern games somewhat felt differently, this is again Anno, how it used to be and how it needs to be. It is featuring the normal grid system. You need to make sure that all your value chains work together 
with the path as well, since now as the goods are simulated again, people really need to carry goods from one spot to the other. So it, it's very important that you do have the marketplaces, the warehouses and the mines and all that kind of stuff really in, in good spots, right? That's really important. As always, you have always a little bit of story mode going on and some side quests that, that always just pop up once in a time where you can just gain some more gold or some more reputation that you didn't, can just use, for example, for the politics and stuff. Um, as always, also, your kind of um, way of playing influences how your opponents do see you. So some of them are really devote, they are pretty like laid back. You can basically do whatever you want, they don't really care about this. Some others do appreciate a lot uh, if you do good for your people and some others don't really appreciate if you do, do good for your people since they are basically just like the, the big ruler that always um, used to make the most profit while not looking at what people really need. So you always have to look at um, with whom you want to be friends or not. Um, as you can see in the gameplay in the back, um, as always, you have a different uh, kind of uh, production chains, um, production areas where you need some goods um, that are produced somewhere else. So you either way have them on the same island or you can carry them over from a different island, depending on what the island is offering you in terms of goods. Yeah. As always, obviously, you don't only have pirates, you also have like free trading partners that have some islands in between of all the other islands where you can always go and try it with, trade with them in terms of uh, goods you need or stuff you want to sell. So it's always pretty important um, that you take care of uh, the trading routes because you can also set some trading routes automatically to the free trading areas. Um, they do have different things to buy, not only goods but also improvements for your ships, improvements for your islands or improvements for your crew because for the the new edit expeditions, you can do some expeditions, which is a little bit more than only doing quests. You basically send out a ship into an unknown area, which is in a new world, um, and you will find very interesting things. And these kind of uh, quests and stuff and expeditions can also be found uh, here on the free trading areas or given you by someone else. And this is where you need some crews for, and you can get improvements or better captains. Um, also as kind of a trading good with those new trading partners that are located all around your islands. At a later stage of the game, as always in Anno games, you will be finding uh, building the, the kind of different fields and stuff more challenging than before. You really need to make most of the space. As you can see, as Keralis did very nicely indeed over here, um, you really need to make most of uh, the space given to you. Since the islands are, as I said, they are not as big as they've been in the future uh, areas and future games. They are not continents, they are just pretty much islands. Um, one thing that is really cool to note, which they took from the um, future games, um, you can still build stuff already and you can see them slightly ghosting over there. Um, this means they can't really build the building yet because they don't have the resources. You can already place it. As soon as the resources are done, you can just click the building and fulfill the job, which is cool because so you can plan ahead uh, your city more or less um, without blocking the space because otherwise you would kind of, I mean, at least I would do so, um, you would then accidentally put something else in the spot where you actually would build something else. So this is pretty cool and will help you to plan ahead a bit better. One thing that is so super obvious and it seems to be normal, yet it's new again, is simple disasters such as fire, disease or something like that. Because obviously, um, you would actually expect that from a nano game, but in the older games, like in the future games, you didn't really have those little things. You only had these big disasters that were kind of a part of a bigger quest. You didn't really have a little thing like this, which always keeps you busy. And this is what Anno is for. Anno is keeping you always busy. The game really makes you rebuild and rethink your city the whole time. And this is not only down to the various new value chains and the new needs you need to fulfill, but also due to these little disasters. And trust me when I say fire is always starting where you don't really have a fireplace in the near uh, in the in the near area. So it is really important to always uh, make sure that your infrastructure is uh, supporting everything in this game. Because one thing I didn't really talk about is that this game also features um, one thing that was implemented with the future games and I think is a good addition. Um, you can't really have 
all people go to the highest level, for example. Which means you, alwa you will always need the lowest um, level of people, you will need the second level, the third level and the fourth level. Because kind of different factories and production chains will demand different people to work in. Which means that their houses are also keeping on the lowest level and be a lot more potential th uh, threats in terms of fire and diseases. Um, so this is something you really need to plan ahead. While bigger and more modern building buildings that use, for example, electricity in a later stage of the game will have less um, danger of burning down, the older ones will definitely do so and you can't really upgrade everybody since then all your production wouldn't work any longer and so this is really an interesting implementation of the game. But I think we just talked a lot about this game now and I think we talked enough about this. I can't really wait to get my fingers onto it. So on Friday um, you're gonna see the first episode. Maybe I can squeeze it on a Thursday already but I'm not too sure about it since I'm coming back from work pretty late. Not really sure when the beta is really available but at latest on Friday you're gonna see the first episode and I would love to see you all there and kind of make it uh, a game or a little let's play where you can really get your infos, get your input in so that I can build upon your request and uh, try out the most of this game and get creative basically because this game allows finally again to be creative in building since a lot of things have been re-implemented that were missing in the future under series. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little look into the game and uh, the old games and I hope you are as excited for the next Anno as I am because I'm definitely very excited. And I hope you uh, enjoyed this and now have a wonderful rest of the Sunday and have a great new week. Until then, bye bye.